one, two. All right, Braves fans, let's get rolling. I'm George McNair, and this is State of the Braves. Well, guys, the Braves now sit at seven and four after dropping two out of three to the lowly New York Mets. Uh, weather disruptions have definitely been uh, a thing uh, since the Braves started the season. It's been just an unfortunate reality to the start of the season, and as a fan, uh, hoping to tune in to watch the Braves when they're scheduled. Uh, it has certainly been fairly frustrating. That continued today as they concluded this series. The game got underway, but underway uh, late, and it just feels like um, it's been stop and start, stop and start. And um, I don't know if it affected their play today, but it was definitely a sloppy game, and they, they just seemed out of sorts from the beginning of this game and and really for this entire series uh you know don't want to feel too down i mean again the braves are seven and four they're leading the nl east um but this series was uh definitely you, you figure at worst uh of course the braves were supposed to play four games you figure at worst you're going to get three out of four and then you end up dropping two out of three to the mets so just uh weaker performance from the bullpen in this series uh, I think that's the biggest change uh, from what we've seen thus far early on uh, for the Braves. Uh, definitely some defensive struggles in Game 3 today. And Ronald Acuna still uh, really is not quite himself, uh, especially from the power standpoint and just putting uh, consistent contact to the ball. Uh, so let's go just over some Braves news briefly. Not a ton of stuff going on outside of the action on the field, but want to cover a few things, and uh, and then we'll get into what happened with the Braves uh, in this series against the Mets. So first things first, obviously Spencer Strider is still on the minds of all Braves fans. Uh, there's no major update on him, uh, while some are speculating that Strider maybe has already had the Tommy John surgery that is likely. Uh, the fact is the Braves have given no update since it was reported uh, originally that he had damage to his UCL. Uh, it was also reported that he was going down to Texas to meet with Dr. Kevin Meister uh, to determine the extent of his injury and uh, what the proper treatment would be, whether it would be uh, full Tommy John surgery. Uh, I think Dr. Meister is the expert on the brace procedure, so I'm sure uh, there might be some hope that, that Strider could avoid the full surgery since he's already had uh, surgery at Clemson in 2019. But yeah, we've had no updates. Of course, um, we're probably going to be the last people to know what's actually going on with Spencer Strider's arm, uh, and so we'll just have to continue to wait and see. I think it's likely that we will hear something over the next day or two. I mean, it's Sunday. Maybe we'll even hear something later today, but uh, the Braves don't really have to tell us anything. And quite honestly, as we've already talked about, it's so unlikely that we're going to see Strider uh, at all for the rest of this season. So, um, you know, maybe we should just not worry too much about, about that in the short term, but obviously Strider's health and future is a big part of what the Braves are planning to do moving forward. So we'll, we'll just wait and see on that. Uh, in some brighter news, uh, and it was a really great night. The Braves did a great job honoring the career and legacy of Hank Aaron. Of course, it was the 50th anniversary of his 715th home run passing Babe Ruth. I think this is one of the greatest moments in all of, uh, sports history, much less baseball history, much less Braves history. So it is really awesome that the Braves are able to celebrate this. Honestly, they celebrate every year, but being the 50th anniversary, they put a little bit more into it this time around. Uh, the Hall of Fame uh, had his actual Hall of Fame plaque at the game. I think that was really cool. The Braves brought out uh, the bat and the ball for, for fans to see. Um, Billy Aaron, his, his widow, of course, was there. And uh, some of Hank's former teammates uh, that were at that game were there, which I thought was really cool. Uh, those guys included Dusty Baker, Ralph Gar, who, of course, Ralph Gar is a Braves Hall of Famer, uh, and Tom House, who is a relief pitcher who he's the guy who actually caught the ball in the bullpen uh, that Hank hit into, you know, left center field. And Tom House caught the ball. And uh, if you were if you were watching the broadcast, he was actually able to hold the ball. Uh, for the first time since he caught it. So that was kind of a cool thing. Um, and the game got underway after King Aaron, the great-grandson of Hank, 
throughout the first pitch. So, man, uh, I just thought, by the way, what a great name that is, King Aaron. Uh, yeah, that, that works uh, very well. So, anyways, cool to see his young grandson throw out the, or great grandson throw out the first pitch and uh, get everything underway. But again, Hank Aaron, uh, just tremendous legacy for the Braves, uh, true gentleman of baseball. Uh, no one has ever, I, I've never heard a bad word said about Hank Aaron. Everybody just says he was the most humble superstar of all time. And uh, I've just so appreciated that growing up a Braves fan, appreciated that about um, the greatest Brave of all time, Hank Aaron. All right, guys, so obviously going into this series, the Braves felt good about this matchup against the Mets. And going into game one, you had to feel really good. Charlie Morton going against uh, former Brave, old former Brave Julio Tehran. Um, and things got off to a really good start, too. It just all looked chalk. It all looked like uh, how you would expect it to go. The Braves uh, jump jump off to a 4 to nothing lead pretty early on in this one. Ozzie Albies had an RBI double. Marcel Ozuna continues his good hitting two-run home run uh, off of Julio. And, yeah, the Braves are up uh, four to nothing after, I think, about two innings. Um, so Morton um, was was cruising pretty well, and then he hit a snag, and uh, it all kind of spiraled in one inning. He gives up the lead. Uh, it really came down to him walking the eight and nine guys for the Mets this setup. Uh, Brandon Nemo, who had been struggling so far this season, but Nemo uh, smoked a three-run shot against Morton. Uh, you know, Nemo ends up going four for four in this game, five RBIs. It's like the Brandon Nemo game, just out of nowhere. Um, and so the Braves go from up four nothing uh, to eventually down eight to five in this game. They get one in the eighth. They get one in the ninth to to get to a one-run game. Travis Darno comes up with the tying run on base. Hits a pretty good shot to uh, right center field. Uh, thought it maybe it split the gap off off his bat, but nope. Uh, the Mets uh, are able to track it down, and uh, they they take game one, eight to seven. So pretty, uh, pretty disappointing game after just such a promising start. You would love to win the Hank Aaron game and all that, but it did not happen that way. Now game two, a uh, little better. The Braves get off to a six to nothing start and this time they do hold on just barely but they do hold on in game two it was kind of a weird game in terms of a Braves game uh, we're so used to them hitting the long ball but this was a singles uh, palooza I guess so 10 out of the Braves 11 hits were all singles and um, obviously enough to score six it felt like they could have scored a lot more they had a lot of traffic on the base paths in this one uh, but you did have some nice moments in this one. So Ronald uh, definitely got on base a few more times, uh, three stolen bases. Jared Kelnick had a really sweet uh, outfield assist, uh, nabbing a guy at second base. Uh, it was one of the better moments. And, of course, Ronaldo Le Lopez is really the player of the game in this one. Six scoreless innings, his second straight really good start uh, to start his Braves career. So a lot of encouragement from Ronaldo Lopez. We talked about when Spencer Strider went down, he was going to be a really crucial piece uh, for the Braves. Um, Chris Sale as well, and they both have pitched really well to begin the year, but especially Lopez. Everybody really, um, I, I think, doubted when the Braves said that they were going to turn him back into a starter. And look, it's early. Uh, you know, it could it could all go the other way eventually, but the early returns are very positive. For Lopez, he just he looks very comfortable out there. He looks very confident. Uh, he's got good stuff. I'll talk about him a little bit more uh, later in this episode. Uh, but it got close because the bullpen uh, was not as sharp in uh, in this series. And Tyler Matzik especially has struggled um, in his last two outings. He allowed a three run home run to uh, to Alonzo in this one, just kind of a fastball right down the middle that Alonzo was able to hit out. Iglesias comes in for the ninth, allows two runs before finally striking out Alonzo to end the game. So it got really hairy there at the end, but the Braves hang on in game two, six to five. Game three, of course, was postponed due to rain, so super annoying. And again, like I said, this kind of uh, stop and start, uh, choppy kind of beginning to the year just continues with game three and game four because game four was also 
um, postponed uh, for a little bit due to rain before they were able to actually get it started. Um, so yeah, the game four just felt like with baseball, it just, it almost feels like early in certain games, you can tell this is not going to be our day. And, and that's certainly how game four felt. Uh, you already had Winans on the mound, so you're not feeling great at going against Quintana. It's uh, actually probably a, a pitching matchup in favor of the Mets already. Um, and then the defense was sloppy and Winans wasn't particularly sharp. We've seen a good uh, Winans in the past, uh, but this was not his best game. Um, and it just felt like almost every Brave in this game was a tick off, both defensively and offensively. Uh, again, you had this delayed start. Maybe that has something to do with everybody's timing being off. Of course, it didn't hurt the Mets in this one. Uh, but multiple plays defensively were not made that we would just say probably should have been made. It extended innings. And every time that happened, the Mets seemed to uh, make the Braves pay and, and score off of, you know, they weren't all technically errors, but they were all plays that you just felt like you should be able to make. Michael Harris had a play where he came in on a ball and then it got over his head. I mean, he just never does that. Uh, RC had a clear uh, clear era, error um, in that same inning. Uh, so two runs scored off of those two plays, basically. Um, and you had a couple other plays later. Riley had an error. It was just a sloppy game. Uh, and then offensively, we, it's like we just could not square up Quintana. And he's kind of that pitcher, that kind of pitcher, you know, he's not blowing you away with 95 mile hour fastballs. Braves just could not square them up. They had, I think, at least three or four near home runs. They pulled, I think, three home runs, barely foul. And then Olsen had a triple off the wall uh, that was about two two feet or less from going going out. And uh, then he gets stranded at third. It was just a lot of that stuff throughout the game. So not really a very fun game to watch. And of course the Braves end up getting just pummeled 16 to four in this when they brought uh, Guillaume in uh, in a mop up role. Of course, Guillaume is their backup infielder. And so it went from a 12 to four game, which is already a laugher to a 16 to four crushing. So, uh, you know, those are never fun to, uh, to watch um, anyways, but, but, in this one, it was particularly a just weird, frustrating kind of game uh, to watch. So you know I, that one kind of can bring you down. I mean, it's the end of the end of the um, the series, and you just kind of feel like, well, that was a a big letdown. But uh, it shouldn't cloud the fact that the Braves again are still seven and four. They still lead the division. Um, you know, you can't hang your hat on one bad uh, series against the Mets. Though every time the Mets come into town, you want to crush them. I mean, they're the Mets. So uh, it does feel like an opportunity uh, wasted for the Braves just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, you know, I just want to get back into this. What's been a very odd start for the Braves. Again, seven and four is great, but it just seems like it's been disruptive. These, um, these starts and stops of the season for the Braves. The Braves have played 11 games. It's the lowest in the major leagues. Uh, most teams have played between 13 and 15 games to this point. Um, so, you know, for the Braves, just just as a review, their first six games were played on the road in 40 to 50 degree weather, really chilly, mostly 40 degree weather in Philly and Chicago. You've, they've had three rainouts already. Uh, one game com had to be concluded early uh, due to rain. You had two games that were played basically entirely in the rain. And then today's game, Sunday's game, started late due to rain. So it's just even the games that they've gotten in, it feels like they've had very few just good weather, um, you know, start on time, just normal games. And uh, and on top of that, of course, a couple injuries and, and whatnot. So just a lot of things that have felt herky-jerky about the beginning of this season. So it's just awkward. I think it's just been an awkward start to the year. Um, and I think on times it's shown on the field and certainly in today's game, I think it really showed, um, you know, a couple guys who, who just haven't got off to the best starts offensively and every, every team's going to have that, but certainly I feel like this has to have some impact on their performance. Uh, the good news for all of this is there will be no delays, um, barring any kind of like weird other events, 
uh, that could delay a game, but there will be no weather delays for the upcoming road trip. The Braves are going to Miami and then Houston, of course, both domed stadiums. So rain cannot be a factor. Uh, it will be a comfortable uh, 72 degrees probably in, in both of these domes. So hopefully in this kind of situation, the Braves can find their groove and they're going against two teams that are honestly really struggling right now. So I think the Braves will start getting, uh, hitting their stride and finding their groove here, um, hopefully in this road trip. Um, all right. The other big thing that is very obvious in this Mets um, series is the importance of the Braves bullpen. You know, the Braves had such a great series against the Diamondbacks. The bullpen just was terrific. Uh, really helped the Braves come back in several games. And then it, it just, the fl the script totally flips in this Mets series where the Braves go up early and then blow several leads because the bullpen, uh, which had been so good, was actually quite bad in this series. So, you know, the Braves pitched 14 and a third scoreless innings against the Diamondbacks. And then they go into this Mets series and then in 14, or sorry, in nine and a third innings, they allow 14 runs. And I'm not including Guillaume's four runs that he allowed in his uh, mop-up inning today. So, yeah, 14 runs allowed in nine and a third innings. That is really, really bad. Uh, and it's kind of an equal opportunity thing uh, in this series for most of the bullpen. Uh, Matzik has looked particularly shaky. Uh, he pitched in game two and game, I guess you could call it game three, since uh, the other game three got rained out. So game two and game three, he pitched in both, allowed runs in both, uh, has not looked particularly great. Um, so that's kind of frustrating. And, and, you know, you just pull for Matzik and you want him to do well. So he has not looked good in his last two. Um, but you have multiple guys allow, allow runs. So it hasn't just been him. Uh, I would say Jimenez, Johnson, and Minter have probably looked the best just in terms of the eye test. Now, Johnson did allow a home run, uh, off of a hanging curveball that was pretty bad in, I think that was game two. Uh, but that was bad pitch selection on top of bad execution. I mean, his curveball is lights out. Um, and they're going, he's going to throw that curveball probably 70% of the time. Uh, but it's one of those things that he throws it so much that players are now, you know, looking for the and sitting on the curveball. And he can zip that 97 mile an hour fastball by guys. Um, and I, I kind of wish he, he needs to find a little bit better of a middle ground with how much he's throwing that curveball. Obviously when he throws it right, it's nearly unhittable, which is why that's why he's throwing it so much. But in that one instance, he just totally hung it right down the middle and it got crushed. Um, so anyways, he has generally looked really good. Mentor allowed a home run against Nemo and that uh, Brandon Nemo game, but um, he's looked really good otherwise. But yeah, Jimenez has probably been the best guy of the bullpen so far in the early going. Um, so all that being said, am I worried about the bullpen? No. I mean, they're going to go through these types of uh, these types of series. Uh, but generally speaking, the Braves need the bullpen to pitch well. If you think about it with Strider out, Freed is really the only likely starter who might somewhat consistently go into the seventh inning if he's pitching well. Obviously, he hasn't been pitching well to begin the year, but uh, you think about, um, you know, you think about Lopez, who's just been converted back to a starter. He's not going, he's, you know, he went six innings, which is, I kind of think that's probably about as deep as you could expect him to go, at least in the early going of the season. And then you've got the older guys in Sale and Morton, and I'm not really expecting them to go deeper than six. So I think the Braves are going to have to really, lean on the bullpen, particularly with the fifth starter uh, in question and who, who's that going to be, uh, the, the bullpen is going to have a lot of innings. And if they're not pitching well as a group, uh, then you're going to have some series like they had against the Mets. Uh, so hopefully they, they will bounce back uh, on this road trip coming up. Ronaldo Lopez, you know, I already mentioned him, but he just continues to impress. This is one of the bright spots of this uh this met series uh game two he just comes out and pitches six great innings uh scoreless shuts him down he had a couple times where he had runners on and he had to lock it down and he did uh, but here you have his first two starts as a brave after being reconverted into a starter and he's just looked really good and and there have been a lot of naysayers out there 
uh, both Braves fans and and national media who really number one didn't believe that the Braves were actually going to convert him back to a starter, um, but that he wouldn't do well. And uh, again, yeah, it's really early in the season, but he looks really sharp. His his fastball is sitting ninety five to ninety seven, and his slider just looks dominant. And uh, you know, so he he's gone twelve innings so far, one run. Five five walks, eleven strikeouts, and on top of all that, both games he's had to pitch uh, have been really bad weather games, um, and he's so he's pitched this this well in bad weather. So, uh, just hats off to Lopez and um, the Braves' decision to convert him back to a starter now that Strider's gone down looks really wise, and um, and he's looking really good right now. Um. That being said, you know, Lopez, if you kind of consider him the fourth starter now, the Braves do still really need a fifth starter to emerge with Strider going down. Alan Winans, I mean, you're certainly not expecting him to really come in and lock down the fifth starter spot. I mean, that would be a great story if he did it, but he certainly didn't look great today. And honestly, I think any start by Winans or Dodd or, or uh, Darius Vines, the, those three guys just feel like they're filling innings and that's kind of all they're doing. Uh, if you get a good start from them, then you just feel like it's icing on the cake. Um, and again, that, that wasn't the case with Winans. I, I might put Vines a little ahead of Winans and Dodd in that regard. I think he probably has the best stuff of the three. Um, but again, those three, I'm not really expecting them to be, to lock down the, the fifth starter spot. Uh, long term. I, I expect that really from Bryce Elder, and we haven't seen him yet. Uh, he's made two starts in AAA. Uh, his first start was decent. It was pretty good. His second start was not very good. Um, Smith Chauver, on the other hand, also in AAA. The Braves have handled him kind of weird to begin uh, the AAA season. They're only giving him like two or three innings at a time, and he has not been very good so far. I, I don't know if he hasn't been very good because that's a weird thing to get thrown into. I, I assume that what they're doing is protecting some of his innings, which in and of itself, I don't, I don't love that, um, you know, that strategy or, or how to handle pitchers to just limit innings. I don't, I don't know uh, how I feel about that. Obviously he's a really young guy and I, I certainly understand the idea behind that, but it does seem to me like you're not really setting him up for success uh, and to be ready to come up when you obviously could kind of use somebody in that fifth starter spot. Uh, in terms of Elder, you know, the reason they they didn't bring him up and allowed Winans to pitch in this game, I, I'm not certain about that one either. You know, maybe they are working on something specific for Elder to improve in AAA before they bring him up. I can, I can understand they want him to be 100% pitching well, ready to go before he comes back to the big leagues so that he can be set up for success. Um, you know, maybe maybe the start just didn't fall well on on his time in, you know, to, to come back into the rotation. Whatever the case might be, I still expect Elder to enter the ro rotation soon and hopefully be the guy and hopefully be the guy that we saw in the first half of last season. Uh, if you're thinking about Wasker and Noah, uh, you know, he's still just coming back from Tommy John surgery. He's pitched about five innings. His ERA is around nine. So he's struggled a bit as well in the early going. Um, so it's kind of funny. You know, the Braves certainly have arms. They have depth. But not many of these guys are pitching all that well to be obvious to jump in uh, into the rotation. Uh, so we're just going to have to see. And um, maybe they'll play it by ear. But I would expect Elder to enter the rotation soon and see how he does. So looking ahead to the Marlins series, uh, the Braves are going to travel to Miami. They don't have an off day. Uh, they had an early start uh, today, Thursday. So um, they will um, be, be on the road maybe already and uh, off to Miami. Uh, the Marlins have had a nightmarish start. They're only 2-11. and 11, So... Um, certainly it looks like the Braves should be able to go down there and take care of business. And the Braves also, because the rain pushed back all the starters, they have a little more of a favorable pitching matchup going in. Freed is going to go against Trevor Rogers in game one. Rogers is a lefty. So expect Duvall to start again in the left field in that game. Of, of course, Freed has been really bad in the first two games. Uh, but 
you know, I feel like you still just expect Freed to go out and figure it out and have a good start. And I, I do expect that. Uh, game two, uh, Chris Sale is going to go against Max Meyer. I don't know much about Meyer. He hasn't pitched a lot in the majors. But he has actually been pretty decent for the Marlins in his first two starts. He's 1-0 with a 2-4-5 ERA in 11 innings so far this year. Um, and then game three is Charlie Morton and Jesus Lazardo. At this point, Lazardo is probably the Marlins' best pitcher, so that's a pretty good matchup in game three. Uh, but like I said, Miami is 2-11. and uh, They've only scored 47 runs this year uh, and allowed 77. So... Uh, in 13 games, that means the, the Marlins are averaging 3.6 runs a game, which is pretty meager, and are allowing 5.9 runs per game. Uh, so, again, this is why you're 2-11 and 11 if, if, if you have that kind of run differential going on. But particularly, you're talking about a Marlins team that, A, has had some, some injuries uh, to their rotation, um, and you have a Marlins team that, to me, didn't do a whole lot in the offseason to improve what was already not a great offense. You're, you might remember they, they had a pretty good season last year. The offense was just good enough with good pitching. Uh, then they lost uh, Jorge Soler. A couple other um, smaller pieces also left. Um, Arise is not having the best start to his season this year. So anyways, their offense is not looking very good right now. So it'd be great for the Braves to just go in, shut them out. Hopefully the bullpen can get back um, on stride as well. And then we can go into Houston. And Houston is also not playing well. They're currently 4-9. and nine. They're also losing pretty handily right now today uh, against Kansas City. Um, so might be <laughs> might be going even further downhill. That one's obviously kind of, uh, uh, kind of surprising. But they've had to deal with their own pitching injuries. So, you know, look. I'm feeling good about the Braves. Really, again, they're they're seven and four. It's not like they're playing poorly, but it just feels like they haven't hit their stride yet. And I really think that these games in Miami and Houston, um, in these domes against teams that aren't playing that well, it's an it's an obvious opportunity for the Braves to uh, start really, you know, let's reel off five and one road trip or something like that, and uh, and come back to Atlanta feeling good. So I'm feeling good about it. Um, Ronald, I think Ronald might get going. He always hits well against uh, Miami. And then go into Houston where we won the 21 World Series. Let's get those good vibes there, and let's just keep it rolling. So, all right, Braves fans. Well, thanks for tuning in to uh, another episode of State of the Braves. And, uh, yeah, early early season action. Uh, and we'll uh, just keep it going, and hopefully the, hopefully the Braves can uh, can improve on what's already been a pretty good start. All right, guys. Talk to you soon.